Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today I will be explaining anti-lag systems. Once again, I'm going to go through a second kind of uh, anti-lag system which uses an inlet bypass uh, valve. And so, three things right off the bat that you should watch before watching this. Turbochargers, uh, turbo lag, and my other video on anti-lag systems. Those give you the good basics that you will need in order to understand everything in this, so that's where I recommend starting. Um, I'll throw some annotations in there so you can get right to those uh, before watching this. So, how does the anti-lag system work uh, with the inlet bypass? Uh, what's going on here? So, what we've got going on is, okay, you're, you're in, let's say, third gear, you're flooring it, and you're about to let off the gas and brake and go into a corner. So, you let off the gas, and you want to keep your turbo spooled so that when you get back in gear, um, say you're going to go down to first gear, that you already have your turbo spooled up. You don't have to worry about that. You've already got power. Well, what happens? All right, so you've got your strokes occurring like usual, your four-stroke engine, uh, and you let off the gas. So what happens is when you let off the gas, that throttle closes. So you've got all this air that was going right through your throttle, but now you've let off the gas, so obviously the throttle's closed. Well, you've got that buildup of pressure because you were at a high RPM, you're producing a ton of exhaust, so that was spooling up your turbo, and so you had a, a good amount of boost. Well, all that pressure needs to go somewhere. So where it goes is you've got this uh, spring valve right here, so the pressure pushes up against that, push, compresses that spring, and allows air to flow in here. So the air is flowing in here, and then your ECU is like, hey, we need to open this valve. So it opens up, this is uh, controlled with a solenoid, and it opens up this valve, which allows air to bypass the engine. So the air comes all the way through this line, bypassing the engine, and comes out here into the exhaust manifold. Well, why would it do that? All right, so what do we have going on in the engine? So when you close the throttle, you're not going to have much air going into the engine but your ECU is going to tell your fuel injectors to spray a ton of fuel in there, so you're going to have a very rich mixture of fuel, a uh, very low um, air-fuel ratio. So what that means is you will not be able to burn all the fuel that's in there, so it'll burn enough to keep the engine going, but then it's going to be throwing some of that fuel into the exhaust, actually the majority of it, because it's not burning very much. So once that fuel hits, uh, goes into in your exhaust stroke, once that fuel comes into your exhaust manifold, well, it's going to meet with that air, and the exhaust manifold is going to be very hot from, uh, you know, you've been driving, and so you've got all this uh, pressure going through it, all this heat going through it from the combustion, so your exhaust manifold is already very hot. It's going to, in turn, combust all of this, uh, this air-fuel mixture, and that explosion is going to keep driving your turbocharger. So with that, you've got the high pressure, the high temperature, you've got an explosion occurring in your exhaust manifold. Yes, it's not very good for your engine, uh, so, but it will keep your turbocharger uh, spooling at, at the exact same uh, RPM, if not, if not you know, slightly worse or slightly better. So the point is you will keep boost. Uh, and also you can have a very loud fire-spitting car, which everyone wants, right? Uh, but what is the downside? Well, obviously, if you have combustion occurring in your exhaust manifold rather than your cylinders, which were designed for combustion, uh, you're going to have some problems with your exhaust manifold. So it really has to be reinforced to be able to withstand these pressures and stresses and temperatures that you're throwing into it. Uh, same with your uh, turbocharger. You've got fire going through your turbocharger. What do you think that does to the temperature? Well, it brings it way up. Um, so you are, you're going to need to replace this kind of frequently if, if you're going to put in an anti-lag system like this. Um, one, uh, another downside is you will lose your engine braking, but as I mentioned in the, in the previous video, that's really not too important for these kind of applications. Uh, but that's how it works. It all just works with these two little valves here. You close the throttle, the pressure forces open the spring, the engine says open up this valve, it allows the air to pass through the engine, the engine's got a ton of fuel going in it, so you bring that fuel into the exhaust manifold with the air, they mix up, explode, and they keep that turbo running, and you have constant uh, boost. Well, not constant, but you know, you keep boost the entire time you're driving, so the goal is achieved. 